Now, as you draw your big set of axes there, we should put some important labels on it. And underneath your new big set of axes, I want you to think about this guy with me. Now, this is an equation we've seen before, right at the beginning of this topic, before we looked at graphs, in fact. These dealt with a particular kind of problem. Do you remember when we were talking about proportionality or variation? And there were two kinds. There's like when you've got two quantities and they both go up together. Uh, like, say, for instance, the example I gave you was money and donuts. I always come back to donuts. That's just the way my brain works. So when one thing goes up, the other goes up. But there was another kind of proportional variation. Do you remember what it was? It was inverse or indirect. One goes up, the other goes down. And what was my example? More people means less donut per person. See, everyone can talk in donuts. Okay, now, this guy here, do you remember? This guy is that second kind. Um, if, for example, x was the number of people in the room, then as x gets bigger, y gets smaller, less, less donuts, right? It becomes like um, a half, a third, a quarter. You're just getting smaller and smaller pieces every time. So what does this look like? Um, I could ask you to draw up a table of values. It would you know, be quite long because we need a lot of values here. But I wonder if you can just help me plot some points directly on here. It's really simple. For instance, if x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1, then y would be equal to 1 over 1, which is 1. So if x is 1, y is 1. Let's put that point on our coordinate axis. So I'm going to call that 1, 1. Okay? Uh, don't worry about labeling it with the coordinates yet because your diagram is going to get super busy in a minute. So we'll just leave it off for now. What about if x was 2? y would be equal to 1 over 2, which is a half, right? So when x is 2, you see I've gone over, right? y is... Wait, you, you just said, you just told me that y would be 1 over 2, which is a half, right? So here's 1. A half would be there, wouldn't it? It's, it's lower, isn't it? So something like that. You see that? So this is kind of like people, people, and this is donuts, right? And I'm getting less and less. When x is equal to 3, you can see the pattern. What's y going to be equal to? 1 over 3, which is a third. So where would a third be? Maybe somewhere like there? There? Okay. Now, this is interesting. This is interesting. Um, you can see, if I keep going, I'm going to get 1, a half, a third. The next one would be a quarter, a fifth, a sixth, etc. Am I ever going to get to zero? Why not? So, so have a look. Year 10. Focus is a really important point, especially for those of you considering uh, two unit or other courses like that next year, because these kinds of things we have, these kinds of things are called functions. We have a lot, a lot of time to spend on those. So. I'm just mindful of you understanding it for the future. That's better. No matter how big you make x, you could make this a million, a billion, a Google, whatever large number you choose. You guys know that's actually a number, right? That's, anyway, that's what Google's named after. Google's named after the number, anyway, long story. Um, no matter how big you make that number, one over that will never be zero. So this is a weird, interesting thing. It gets closer to zero, but never actually arrives. So here's what you need to do. I'm inclined to agree. with your pen in hand, we're going to draw something weird and different that we've never put on any of our graphs before onto this set of axes to try and capture the fact that we get closer and closer and closer but never arrive. Take your pen, pencil, and draw in a dotted horizontal line either on top if you can see it or just above the x-axis. Now, this dotted horizontal line, because it's right on the x-axis, 
We know its equation. Does anyone know what the equation of that horizontal line will be? Y It'll be y equals, zero. y equals zero. Because where are you up and down? That's what y is. Answer, you're not up and you're not down. You're exactly in the middle. That's y equals zero. This guy's really important. You need a new color for this. This guy is called an asymptote. That's a weird word. But what it's talking about is this behavior of getting closer and closer and closer, but never arriving, okay? So in fact, I can sort of complete what's going on over here. Maybe you've already done that. And you can see the shape, just like all of these guys here, it's curved, but it's a different kind of curve, okay? It's getting closer to this, it's approaching, but never quite reaching it. Okay, now we were just sort of plugging some numbers in here. What happens to the left? What's going on? Um, what if x were, say, a half? If x were a half, what would y equal? Let me write it. If x is a half, then y is equal to 1 over a half. What is that? That's 2, right? In fact, this thing, it just takes the reciprocal every time, right? So y is going to be equal to 2. Well, where is that? That was x equals 1, so x equals a half is here. So y equals 2 will be up here, like that. Do you notice that? Uh, what about, say, x is equal to a third? x is equal to a third. Then y will be 3. So when you come in closer to the um, origin, then you're going further up, like this. Now, this should make you a bit suspicious, right? Because this kind of shape here is exactly the kind of shape you observed over here, but just sort of rotated around, like sort of 90 degrees. So in fact, you can finish off what's going on like that. Now, over here, we could play this game of putting in larger and larger numbers of x, right, and seeing what happens and imagining. But when you try and go to the left, you run into this problem because at x equals 0, that's what you would do to find a y-intercept. What happens when x is equal to 0? So, so this guy, yeah, someone's already reached for their calculator, it says math error, what does that mean? Um, this guy blows up, I will show you why it blows up, because not just some rule that a mathematician said, I've decided that this blows up, you know, and some smart guy decided and we all agreed. Here is why, okay? Um, humor me, uh, something like say 6 divided by 3, what is 6 divided by 3? It's 2. The reason why we can say this is because you can equally say that 6 is 2 times 3. Do you agree? Right? Um, and this is like how you deal with equations. I've multiplied both sides by 3. That's how I go from here to here. Is that okay? Right, now let's imagine, right, that 1 divided by 0 is some number and I don't know what it is. Right? If only I had a branch of mathematics that was dealing with numbers when you don't know what they are. Oh, oh wait, I do. It's called algebra. So. I'm going to give this a label, right? Um, let's call it n for a number, and I don't know what this number is. Well, if this is going to play ball, if this is going to work with the rest of the rules of mathematics, I should be able to do this thing, right? Do you remember I did this? I multiplied both sides by 3 up here. So down here, I'm, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0. I should get 1, and then what do I get on the right-hand side? Well, one of the things you know about zero is that if you multiply anything by zero, you get zero. zero. So what this is telling you is that this, this can't make sense because one can never equal zero. So that's why this blows up. That's why your calculator says math error because it's running up against this reality. So what does this mean? For this graph here, x can't equal zero. That means, remember this dotted line we drew at y equals zero? You've got a dotted line to draw at x equals 0. So you get another asymptote. And because I've put this line on here, I want to know what line it is. So I'm going to label it x equals 0. Okay. So this is a weird kind of shape. It's, it's quite different to all these other ones, right? Um, even though it has similarities. Now, I'm not quite finished. I know exactly what's happening over here on the right-hand side. Is there anything happening over here on the left-hand side? How would I find out? 
What, what did I do to get these things? What did I do? I just tried putting numbers in, right? I plotted points. Now you could do the same thing over here. When x is equal to negative 1, what will y equal? y will be 1 over negative 1, which is itself negative 1. So you can put that on, can't you? What about x equals, say, negative 2? x equals negative 2. Your y is going to be, think about it, y is going to be 1 over negative 2, which is negative a half. Negative a half. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? In fact, it's exactly the same shape you got over there, except it's been rotated around. Okay? You've just drawn the whole shape. This, this, what you just created is, oh, my scale's a bit off, but I'll leave it for now because it's mostly okay. This is the hyperbola, okay? Do you remember when I asked you to draw these four graphs to review, I pointed out something about their symmetry. Do you remember that, right? Um, this kind of symmetry was? It's called reflectional, right? And it went with what kinds of powers of x? What kinds of powers? Even, two, four, six, eight, they'd all look the same. Okay? This is not reflectional symmetry, it's rotational. rotational symmetry, right? So if you took your page and you just spun it around, you'd get the same thing. What kind of symmetry does this have? Now, this is interesting, right? This guy seems to have both, but in a particular kind of way. Um, you can't flip it across this way. Do you notice that? You can't, oops, you can't flip it across vertically. Right? Yeah, you've got to flip it, well, you've got to sort of look at it at 45 degrees and flip it this way. Right? Do you notice that? A better way to say it without having to turn your head is you can just take this guy, in fact, take your page, take your page now, and just like y equals x and y equals x cubed, spin your page upside down. So you've rotated 180 degrees. And you can see it's still the same hyperbola. Okay? So if you've got another color there, can you please write? You have rotational symmetry here. which should not surprise us that much because look carefully at the powers. Look at all of the, where did I put my black one? Uh, there it is. Look at the powers of our reflectionally symmetrical graphs over here. Three, what's the power here? One. I didn't write it like that, but it is actually a power. What's the power? Ryan? Oh, it's so close. It, we, x to a half is something else. We'll come to that a bit later. This is minus one, right? Which clearly is, do you see the pattern, right? It's sort of, it's, it's an odd number, isn't it? We don't usually think about odd numbers with negatives, but three, one, negative one, they're clearly made of the same DNA, okay? So I think that's just a really nice feature of it that you should see, even though it's so different, it's, it's made of the same stuff.